Good morning, everybody. It's your buddy Rick. It is uh, Saturday, February, February. I always use my New York accent. I February, I say it. It's February 18th, 2017. All right, I'm going to continue uh, with proof that these, these affidavits are working. All right, uh, Everybody who has, has received these affidavits and sending them out, you should start getting a response from your employer and, and you know, um, child support agency. And what I want to do here is I want to tell you what to do with the information once you get it. Okay, we're following a plan. What I'm doing is I'm walking you along here. All right. It, it, I remember I keep saying it's a process. So what we're doing is we're, we're demanding from our employer to supply uh, proof of the law and why they're sending your property. And then what they do is they supply uh, these income withholding orders. And then it's your job now to point out to them that, you know, it's not a court order because they're, they, they always respond with, well, we received a court order and we have to take your, you know, we have to garnish your pay and send it. They always use that word, court order. That's the reason why these income withholding orders always look like a court order, but it's all, it's a complete fraud. All right. I just received uh, one of these BS uh, uh, IWOs from one of my subscribers last night and it's textbook fraud. It. Now, these income withholding orders are supposed to be based upon, that's where they get their supposed authority, these uh, child support agencies. See, they have these BS laws that the legislation, see, the legislation makes these laws and it, it all, they all act upon the presumption that due process will be followed. So in order for child support to be able to go into a court and say that they're, they're, they're not breaking the law, it has to be based upon an actual court order that was created that followed due process and it's legally enforceable, it's signed by a judge, it's signed by a clerk, it's entered with the clerk's office, and then it's sent to the child support agency. And then they take it and then they initiate a collection practice. But as we we're finding out, there is no uh, legally enforceable court order. The court order is void. It's not signed by a judge. Or if, or if it is, it's usually signed by a dep deputy clerk, which is not a clerk. And it's never entered with the clerk's office. So we have all of these reasons why the, uh, the child support agency cannot claim that they're doing their job legally. And here's, here's another thing. They're not a court of law. They're not allowed to issue warrants. Remember I said in one of my earlier videos, why, why doesn't the court just send a court order to your employer and say, listen, uh, we need you to send X amount of dollars to the child support agency. That's the way it's supposed to work. See, what they do is they, they it's called hearsay. The child support agency is claiming to your employer that, oh, we have a court order requiring us to collect the money. And then your job is like, okay, you know, they're taking them at their word. It's hearsay. It's, it's got to be a direct chain of evidence. Okay? That's like uh, anybody old enough to remember with the O.J. Simpson case that the, uh, the lawyers had a, a field day with the collection of the evidence with the O.J. thing. Because so many people were touching it and they, they invariably destroyed the chain of custody and... Uh, if you ch destroy the chain of custody, so many people can tamper with the evidence and you have so much reasonable doubt. It's, it's almost, if that's how they got OJ off. Okay. That's how they got the guy. They claim firm and planted evidence and all that stuff. And that's how they got him off. And that's what we're doing. We're going to, we're saying, Hey, uh, you don't have a court order. It's not signed by anybody. It's not registered with the clerk's office. I want my money back. All right. Now I want to show you some proof of what's going on that uh, we're getting a response from these people. So this one here is from uh, the same guy I was showing you the other day. Florida Executive Director, whatever, 
And I received your February 13th letter to the Florida Department of Revenue Child Support Program. And please be assured they're responding to requests. It's not a request, it's a demand of assistance. We're not asking you for assistance. But anyway, we'll keep going. Your issues are stated in your inquiry. See, inquiry, no, it's a demand. Has been reviewed. We observed that we weren't able to review your case without more information. I mean, well, they have the information, but whatever, we'll play along. Okay, now we're going to go down here. For your information, he's being a wise guy now. For your information, child support obligations, there's that word obligation. An obligation is a contract, okay? A contract requires two parties and it requires consent on both parties. So how can you have an obligation if you didn't consent? Okay, so there we go. Are not a debt under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. Where's the law that says it isn't? See? So that's his hearsay. Okay? A debt is a debt. Any debt must be validated. So even if it's not a debt under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, oh, remember my, my validation of debts, what I do is I'm like, okay, if you're claiming that it's not a debt under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, then show me the court order that's telling you to collect this money. Or where is the court order that's saying it's a child support debt? And they can't provide it. So they're relying on the presumption that there's a, a, a court order for child support debt. And there is none. That's what we're saying. Well, you provide it. In order for you to, you got to provide it. And if you can't provide it, you can't rely upon this, uh, well, the child support debt's not a debt under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. You see where we're going here? We're little by slowly breaking these people down. All right? So this is the same guy. It's another response. So it's positive. Okay? So now, uh, now I'm going to show you uh, an email that I got from a guy last night that, I'm, that I sent the paperwork in. All right? Uh, he sent the, uh, the notice to employer, to his employee. He got a response right away. All right? For starters, that to... For starters, that to-work letter was a bombshell. We'll definitely keep you posted. I already heard from corporate office. Okay. The withholding order was given to me by the company after I turned in that letter. I demanded it. I showed them that it was no warrant. I went a step further, got a copy from the clerk saying that there was nothing registered from the clerk's office. Okay. Now, what I want all of you to do is I need you to go to your county clerk, or if, and if you don't live there, send it by certified mail receipt to the clerk demanding a copy of the court, the support order registered with the clerk. It has to be there. And then you're going to get, and that's what, like, look, that's what I used in the court when the judge said to me, well, the family court order was entered. And I go, Your Honor, no, it wasn't. I showed him, I showed him this. Okay, this is what I did. All right, I sent it in. I did a video on this in August. Okay, it's the letter. Okay, this is the response I got. Okay, there was nothing, there is nothing here. Look, this is on their letterhead, by the way. Judgment is not on file. And then he told me to check with the family court. But guess what? I don't have to check with them because it's their job to enter it. And they didn't do it. Okay, this is the judgment and lien book. Okay, Richard Warman, name not on file. Okay, so if I'm not on file, it means I don't owe a debt. And my man here did the same thing. Okay, what we're doing is we're building up evidence. So I need all of you to do that. Okay, so this, this is a very happy man right there. Okay, now listen, his corp is going to get back to him. There's a good chance they're going to be like, well, you know, we still have to follow the law, blah, blah, blah. But that's okay. They, all they provided to him was an income withholding order. So now all he's going to have to do eventually is go to a court, like an appellate court, to file a writ of mandamus and file a writ of prohibition uh, requiring his, his job to stop withholding his, his uh, property. Okay? Uh, now, you get this stuff, right? You, you get a response from the child support agency, your employer... And they, 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 they give you these bullshit income withholding orders. Now what do you do? All right, you're going to hold on to those, all right? And what one thing you're going to do, and this is what I'm working on right now, all right? This is called an affidavit of information. What it really is is a criminal complaint. And what we're going to do is you're going to take 
these income withholding orders, and you're going to take any statement you got from the child support enforcement, and you're going to submit it with this document, all right? And what you're doing is we're submitting it to the attorney general of your state. The attorney general of your state is the people's attorney. Their job is to actually represent you. You know, I left that the other day uh, um, when, the, my, when my, man, my man here got the letter from the attorney general's office when they said, well, we represent it. No, they represent you. They've just, they just been getting away with that forever. They, they're not supposed to be representing uh, state employees and state agencies that are violating your rights under color of law. They're supposed to be representing you. So let me just give you a brief breakdown. This affidavit of information is presented, right, State Attorney General, also known as, and is established at law as the People's Attorney, requiring an immediate response by your Office of Attorneys conducting an impartial and unbiased investigation into the facts and evidence introduced. You're going to be introducing these evidence, this evidence that you received, okay? Income withholding order... Without a judge, uh, and if you have the if you have the fake court order with uh, without the judicial signature and all that stuff, it's even better. All right. Investigation into the facts and evidence introduced that is proving probable cause that is requiring grand jury and prosecution of the trespassers. Please understand and acknowledge that state employees involved in these trespasses in this, oh, I, I gotta fix that. I just threw this together real fast. Involved in this trespass upon rights, enjoy alleged qualified immunity under the 11th Amendment. What happens is you, when you try and sue these people right away, there's this presumption that every state employee has 11th Amendment protections and they're sovereign and they can't be sued and case dismissed. No. The evidence you're providing is showing that they don't have uh, the immunity. See, you know what their immunity is? It's the same as your presumption of innocence. Everybody heard the thing, you're presumed innocent, you're innocent until proven guilty, except in family court, the kangaroo court. But every American citizen is presumed innocent. So it's, it's the same thing, they're playing with words. But what we're doing is we're proving, no, they're not. They don't have any immunity because they're violating your, 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 your due process. Okay? Uh, qualified immunity under the 11th Amendment, except qualified immunity is a presumption quickly dispelled by the facts and evidence introduced by this affidavit showing and proving illegal acts that have caused substantial harm gained by the trespasses upon your name, an American citizen with rights guaranteed, you know, I got to fix that, but due process of law under the 4th, 5th, 7th is your trial by jury. You're supposed to have a trial by jury before any of your property can be seized or by a warrant based upon probable cause, which is the, the Fourth Amendment. And the Fourteenth Amendment, that's your equal uh, protection. Whereby this public office is required to provide equal protection of the law under the Fourteenth Amendment. Thank you. And, you know, I go further into what they're doing. And then... How you're going to introduce the evidence, you're going to take these documents that they sent you, and on the bottom of every page, you're going to write like uh, Exhibit A, it doesn't, and then an Exhibit B, and Exhibit C, and then you're introducing it to these people, and what you're doing is you're introducing evidence, and you're going to make it harder for these people to ignore you. And, excuse me, what's going to happen is, ultimately, you're going to end up going to hopefully to an appellate court or whatever, and you're going to get your property back. You're going to get the, the, the support orders voided. That's the way it's supposed to work. But I'm taking you this way. And you can see now every, that, that people are getting responses to these affidavits. All right? They're not ignoring you. That's what we want. Okay? You want acknowledgement, and you want to ask them questions. And what we're doing is we're boxing these people in. Okay? And, uh, and then along the way, you're learning. You're learning that what a void judgment is. You're, you're learning what due process is. You're learning that without due process, everything is void. All right, I hope this helped out some people out and prove these things are working. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.